Hey guys, um, can you guys hear me okay? Um, there's a chat feature, so if you guys can hear me all right, just put it in the chat. If you have a microphone, that's fine too. Okay, I, I hear from a few of you that yes, you can hear me great. And um, I'm broadcasting a, uh, the video as well for now anyway. Uh, once we get started looking, uh, I'll probably just turn it off. But I just want you guys to see what I look like, put the face to the voice. Um, let's just talk about real quick um, what we're going to do today is basically I'm just going to show you guys how to do some research. Um, I've been teaching for your instructor for quite a few years, but it was always in person. And we were talking about it one day and we we're like, well, what about all the online students? They don't get the same instruction. They don't get to learn about the resources available uh, to them. And uh, that was a big aha moment for me because I, you guys have been deprived. And there's a lot of good resources out there uh, that we provide through the library. And um, it's just, I don't know. Um, I realized that there's this kind of interface that we can do, and then you guys can get exposed to all of these tools. And what a lot of times what I hear from students is that I wish I would have learned about these things before I became a senior. Um, it would have been handy to have throughout my whole college career. And so that's what I hear a lot. And so I, that's why I kind of designed this around some of those things that they that students have found useful in the past. All right. Um, Oh, and hey, it looks like uh, we have a, a gentleman here named Chris Bigelow that has joined us today. And uh, Chris, it's good to uh, to see that you're here. Hopefully, everything's working sound wise and everything. Um, did you want to I say hello? Hear, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? I can hear you okay. Yeah. I'm really hoping the, the video is not on. I hope you cannot see me. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't see you, and now I want to know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks to the students who joined us. I do uh, highly uh, recommend this course with the library, obviously, and it'll be useful not only for our, our present class, but uh, throughout college, and then I think in the future as well. So thank you, Ben. You bet. Thank you, Chris. All right. Um, well... Um, if any of you have questions throughout, please feel free to ask. You can, you know, it's a small enough group here today that you could just uh, raise your hand in the class here, um, do the chat thing, or you can also um, probably just use your microphone. I'm okay with that. So if anything's not making sense, it's a little fuzzy, feel free. You can ask. Um, we're going to, I'm going to shoot for about 30 minutes and then give you guys some time to practice if you want. Um, we have found and research has shown that you do a better, you remember it a little better when you get your hands dirty after hearing about this stuff. Um, all right, so without further ado then, let's get going on this. I'll shut the camera off here and it just makes it a little easier for me that I'm not getting distracted. Um, let's see, here we go. Okay, so are you guys, um, are you guys able to see this PowerPoint by any chance? Can you just let me know? They've changed the interface a little bit, and so I'm just trying to make sure. Okay, good, good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate those of you who've affirmed that you can see it. All right, so let's get going on this PowerPoint. Then we'll jump in and do a little bit of searching. So when figuring out your topics, you want to make sure that it fits the assignment. Um, oftentimes your teacher will give you some directions on how to do that. For example, you might need some peer-reviewed or scholarly articles, um, which are the best usually. It's gone through a review process by experts, so those are the cream of the crop. Um, but to me, I think one of the more most important things about picking a topic is to make sure that it is interesting. And because if you're like myself, we always do better when we can are interested and we can invest ourselves in this topic right um, so pick something that you can you find fascinating and then also you want to make sure that what you pick is researchable there are some topics that are easier to find information on than others but you can also take a topic and make it not researchable 
So let's say, for example, I was going to research money. Who doesn't like money, right? And if I wanted to break it down and make it a little more narrow, I could say that I would like to find Bitcoin usage, right? You guys, you guys know what Bitcoin is, right? It's like electronic money that you can use to pay anyone around the world. Um, so let's say I want to research Bitcoin usage and let's let's make it really narrow to where it's not going to give me a lot of results so if i was to do something like bitcoin usage in south africa in 2005 by white females between the ages of 19 and 25 i've added so much criteria there that i'm probably not going to find anything right so don't get it too narrow but also don't make it too broad you want to kind of shoot for somewhere in the middle um, there's another thing that makes a topic not researchable, and that's if it's a brand new topic. So when Bitcoin first came out, I was helping a student do research on it, and we couldn't find anything. We might have found two things. So just be aware, if it's brand new or you make it too narrow, you might not find anything. All right, so for today, we've got two, um, two topics, you could say, that we can pick from. Uh, we've got our heroes and we've got villains that we can use as a subject for today. <clears throat> and I'm honestly, I can go either way. So I'm going to let you guys vote, those of you that are here. If you would like to vote for one of these, the heroes or the villains, just put it in the chat and then we'll know which one we're going to roll with today. Looks like we have a hero. Oh, you guys are good people. Oh, I was just about to say you guys are good people, and then we got a villain. All right, all right. All right, two villains. Looks like uh, we've had five people. That's about, yeah, that's about it right there. So I think everyone's had a chance to put in their votes. Um, and we have actually three for heroes and two for villains, so we'll... We'll go with Thor here. So let's go there. Here's... Oh, shoot, no, Chris. Villain to break the tie, really? Um, <laughs> never mind. All right, all right, all right. Or we could do both. Um, no, let's... There's only two heroes. Oh, gotcha, I gotcha. Um, someone replied discreetly, so... Uh, privately. Yeah, if you guys didn't know that, you, you can actually uh, send messages or chats to people privately. So, Okay, there we go. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you. Um, okay, so what can heroes teach us about morality? If we were to pull out some key words that we could use for this subject, um, like the main words, right? You guys can probably guess what the main words are, right? We've got our heroes, which we would need, and probably morality. Does that make sense? Heroes and morality. There we go. So we do have our heroes. We've got our morality. Those are the main words. So what we're trying to, to illustrate here is think about what the juicy words, the main words are on the topic. Pull those out of your question that you're asking. Usually you want to ask a question like, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? What are the issues? So pull out those main words. And then you can see here, we're combining the two words with the word and in between them. So we're saying, look for the word heroes. If you find a book or an article that has the word heroes, then also look to see if that source has the word morality in it. So for it to be returned, it has to have heroes and morality in it somewhere. So that can be in the title, it can be in the abstract or the summary, it can be in, on one of the pages. That's how that works. Hopefully that makes sense. A lot of times I have students that have picked a topic that's interesting to them, so kudos to them. But then the thing is, is they've picked a topic that they know nothing about. And sometimes it's challenging to know where to begin. 
when you don't know anything about it. So what we teach is do some brainstorming so that you can get some ideas on the topic so that you know what to search for. Let me tell you one of the tricks to doing research. You've got to find that magic word that will give you the results that you want. So go to Google, go to Wikipedia and learn about the topic and pay attention to some of those juicy words. There's going to be a magic word in there somewhere. Take that magic word, bring it over into the library and do a search in one of our databases and find some articles. That's to me, if I was to give you like, if I said nothing else today, that's the one thing I would want you to know. Find that magic word, put it in and find credible resources. Um, now, just real quick, let me explain the difference between searching in Google and searching in the library. Um, Google is everything's free, generally speaking, right? There's occasionally you'll run into a paywall where you have to pay to get something. We pay for all the content that's available from the library. Um, these are databases that we have spent a substantial amount on. Um, there, we used to have one about that was forty thousand. I don't know what the most expensive one is now, but this is content that you're paying for that you can't find on the internet. There, there's magazines and newspaper articles and uh, books and things like that. Um, and so that's a big difference between searching and Google. And and you can actually set some filters in the library's databases to make them peer reviewed or scholarly, which you can't do with Google. There is Google Scholar which can do that. And by the way, that is a good resource. But it doesn't have everything that's out there. So that's where the library comes in. Okay. So let's move on and let's talk about evaluation. You found something and you need to evaluate it to see if it's good enough to use for your paper that you're writing, right? Look at who wrote the article or the book. How do they know what they know? Are they an expert? Do they work for a prestigious company within that area? Um, are people citing them? If in doubt, just Google them and you can see all about the person. And then there's that peer-reviewed thing, um, which is a, basically a review process done by experts um, where let's okay let, let me explain it if I wanted to get published I would submit my article to a peer-reviewed journal and they would take my name off so that there's no bias and they would distribute my article to other experts in the same field so if I was a psychology person writing about psychology my paper would go to other psychology experts and usually we've all got PhDs they review it and look at everything and they'll rip it apart basically and if it's credible, great, I'm published. And if it's not, I get it back and I have to revise it. And I have to redo it and redo it and redo it, you know, until it actually passes after I keep submitting it. And once it's good enough, then it gets published. So that's what peer reviewed is. Oh, and let me say this too, because there's sometimes confusion on this. Peer-reviewed, scholarly, and academic journals, those all mean the same thing. It's scholarly, it's peer-reviewed, and it's out from an academic journal. Right? All right. So for today, what we're going to use off the library homepage is something called OneSearch, and it will look for books, articles, newspapers, and videos. And it's all in the one, same search, too, which is kind of nice. I think I've kind of already hit on this, but modify your searches. That is the trick to doing research. And then you can always ask for help. Um, this is a picture of the reference desk, which is in the library, physically in the library. Um, and you're welcome to come in and use this. Uh, come in and have us help you. It can be, I need help with citations. I need help finding an article or a book. And you can also contact the person virtually. I'm sure a lot of you might not even step foot on campus. We have, what do we have now, like 29 degrees that are exclu exclusively online now uh, through UVU. And so there's a lot of people that might not come on campus and you might be one of those. So you can call us, you can text us, 
or there's a chat feature right off the library homepage that you can use. Um, and let me also say this, there's some ebooks that you guys could use. Um, so you don't have to come in and pull our books off the shelf, you can use the ebooks. They're usually in a PDF format and you can just view it online right there after you find it. Um, all of this stuff that I'm going to show you, you can do from home. Like, You guys will need to log in. I'm actually here on campus. So uh, when you're on campus, you're connected to the Wi-Fi. It knows that you're here and that you are a student, faculty, or staff member. But when you're at home, you're going to have to log in with your student credentials. Uh, but I won't have to today. All right, so let's go over to the library's website. Um, Sorry, I have to ask, are you guys able to see Firefox now? I just switched over to a browser. Can you guys see that? All right, cool. Thanks. Okay, so let's do, um, what did we do? Heroes and Morality? I mean, we can do that search, so I'm going to type that in, but not with caps on. Heroes and Morality. Oh, and before I actually execute the search, notice to the right of my search box, there's that section that says Ask a Librarian. That's where you can turn to for help. Uh, myself and all of my colleagues, we maintain that. We run the chat and the text service, and then we'll answer the phone when you call. Um, all right, well, uh, you can narrow this down further if you wanted to. You see the tabs at the top where it says books, videos, music, databases, catalog. I'm leaving it on the one search. I'm just gonna search everything that'll bring up books. Oh, it'll bring up music, uh, DVDs even. Uh, it's gonna search a lot of stuff. So let's see what we get. All right, good news. We got some results and we've got about well, here, let me make it a little bigger. We got 1,200 results or so, which you can see right there at the top. Make that just a little bigger there. All right. Now, before we start looking at these, we're going to want to do some filtering. And if you've used Amazon.com, which these days I, I bet it's hard to find someone who hasn't, you look on the left hand side and you're going to see some filters. First off, I love that this date always comes up. It's 1776, which is a very patriotic date. And that's a little old. So what I would do is drag this slider bar here. So you grab this left blue bar, and we can drag that up to the date that we want. And for me, I like 10 years. But this is really up to you and up to the topic there are certain topics that you definitely need to pay attention to the date more than others. As soon as I let go, it's going to update. And that took out about 300 of my results. If I scroll down a little bit further, I'm going to see some source types, which basically is what medium is it being distributed in. Um, we've got academic journals. Those are peer-reviewed and scholarly. That's the cream of the crop that I'd mentioned. We have some books, newspapers, that's what news means, and then we have some magazines. There's something weird that goes on in here with the magazines. Um, if you look at the icon here for number four, it says it's an academic journal. That means it's peer-reviewed and scholarly. But if it's a magazine, it's going to say it's a periodical. So if I was to check this magazine's checkbox here, it's only going to show periodicals in my list of results. So just be aware of that magazines and periodicals inside here mean the same thing. So if your teacher ever says find only scholarly peer-reviewed articles then you're gonna come up here and check this academic journals checkbox. And you should be good. That right there my friends is one of the big reasons that I think it's this is superior to Google. I'm not saying I don't like Google because I love Google too. If you scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see a subject filter. And you can use the subject filter to narrow your topic down. Um, when you don't know how you want to narrow it, you don't know enough about it, you just type in the word money and you're like, I have no idea. I just like money, so you type in money. 
Well, you could come in here and use a subject filter and narrow this down. If you click the link here that says show more, you can see all of the subtopics for your search that you just did. And we've got morality, we've got heroes, we've got ethics, which means kind of the same thing as morality. Heroism, professional ethics, women heroes in literature. If you want a demographic, they've got some ages and the sexes here. Business ethics, hmm, heroes in business. Um, we, oh, anti-heroes. We might even have, I wonder if we have sports. I mean, sports heroes could come up as well, right? Okay, so what did I select here? I just did those top three. I'll click update. We'll go with that. All right, so we have about exactly 200. I've never done that before because 200 is actually my favorite number. Whenever a student asks me, what's the ideal number of search results? I always say 200. Here we go. That's awesome. Um, believe it or not, you can look through 200 results really quick. Let me show you how. First off, I always just read the title. So I like the sound of number two. The title sounds interesting and it sounds relevant to what I would be wanting to do. If you put your cursor on this magnifying glass icon, it's going to open this new window and it gives you a summary, also called an abstract. And I can read that and then I don't have to read the whole article. Um, this one here is peer-reviewed or scholarly or an academic journal. And, and one of the things about these things is they tend to be long. How long is this one? Uh, I need to go right there. We're looking at, a, oh goodness. Oh, is that 26 pages? I think that's about right. So yeah, it's a little long. But it sounds good. Well, let's say we want to use it. Your PDF and HTML full text are actually the articles. I don't know if you can see those there. It says HTML full text or PDF full text. So I can click that and open it up. Let's take a look at the PDF. If you click on the top of result number two, this part right here that is um, all in blue, it's like a hyperlink. If I was to click that, it will take us into here and if I scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see that HTML version which is right here. The HTML version just means that it's a web page format. That's it. This one gives us both a PDF and an HTML version. If you do get both, you want to always go with the PDF because you're going to need the page numbers if you're using MLA. Sorry, do you guys know what MLA is? <laughs> Um, that's the citation style for the humanities usually. English classes use MLA, right? Um, okay, so let's look at the PDF here. There we go. You guys can see what it looks like. It's basically if someone was to take a, open the magazine or the journal and take a picture of it or scan it, that's what you're going to see here. Notice the page number here, 186. So it does have our page numbers. That is the difference again between the HTML version. Um, it's going to give you an introduction. I usually read the introductions and then I'm bad. I usually jump to the end. You're never supposed to do that when reading a book, right? But in this case, it's very useful. If you go to the very end, you're going to see something like this where they say the results or a conclusion. So when I read a scholarly article, I'm looking for, there's a discussion, I'm looking for results, discussion, or conclusion section. So I read the intro and read the ending, and then I know if, sorry guys, that was a lot of scrolling. Um, here's our conclusion. Once I read the intro and the conclusion, I know if I'm going to want to read this any further. If not, I get rid of it, and if I want to, then I keep it. And then I'm going to have to cite it if I'm going to use it, right? So let me show you guys how I can get that citation. I'm going to go back to here. Actually, let me, let me go one step further back just so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm back on my results page. And if I click on number two, right, I'm just going to click on that hyperlink there. 
look on the right hand side there's a site button right if I click on site it opens this window right in the middle of my screen and it's going to give us the different formats of citation we've got APA here so if you are business science health you're going to be using APA if you're the humanities English and such you're going to use MLA and you can copy and paste that it's like the one time in school you're allowed to do that to copy and paste and not get in trouble um, there is one thing if you ever are going to use APA make sure you check the titles this is the title for this article right here in that citation they often capitalize it in MLA format so they'll capitalize the first letter of each word it shouldn't have the first letter of each word capitalized so in this case it's done right for APA for MLA if I go back down notice they did capitalize the first letter of each word and that is correct for MLA uh, one other thing to be cautious of and I've seen this quite a bit lately even the author's name here is at the beginning and sometimes I will see the author's name in all caps if you see that you're gonna have to fix it um, it should be in this you know normal spelling you capitalize the first letter of, of the person's name and their last name all right guys that is how you get the citations um, you're probably not gonna have time to immediately read 26 pages or read all these long articles so you're gonna want to save them a good strategy that I personally do and I recommend to people is just go through and find a bunch of you know like 10 articles or depends on how many you need and save them and then read them later so how do you save them right above that citation button there there's an email button if you click on email it's gonna open a new window again lots of new windows going on here isn't there notice here that it's checked HTML and it's checked PDF so it's sending us both versions and then look right below that it says citation format right now it's on this Brazilian national standards we don't want to use that probably APA or MLA let's just say MLA this is an English class right and then I put in my email address and something I like to do personally is I like to grab my search that I did and put it in the comments section so that I've emailed the search so if I don't like this article I can just go do the search again later but that's just personal preference at least send yourself the article with that checkbox and the citation and then send it and you're good well sorry I forgot to say put in your email address but that should be a given Um, there is one thing that you should never do let me show you that because I didn't show this one time in an English class and I had a student lose two hours of his life he lost two hours worth of his work so what he'd done is he'd gone and opened a Word document and instead of saving it or emailing like what I just showed you he grabbed the URL he went up to the top to the web address and he copied that into a Word document and he had eight sources that he'd found so eight links and I saw him like a week after I saw him the first time and he's like hey Ben why aren't these working and I felt really bad because I dropped the ball I didn't tell him which I'm telling you guys now that these links the URL is temporary um, and so I, I can't tell you how long they'll work for but they do work for a day or two but I think around three days they don't work anymore so don't grab the URLs if you prefer to get a link use this permalink which is in the bottom right so right below site there there should say permalink if I click on that it's gonna open this permalink here which I can then copy and paste that if that's how you prefer to do it if you email it to yourself it's gonna include this link though so that's why I just say email it because then you get everything All right, uh, there is just one last thing that I'd like to show you guys, and we're about on, on track. We're exactly where I want to be. This is good. So if I go back to our search results, there is one thing that I just have to show you guys. 
Notice number three looks a little different below, like the bottom part of number three looks different. Instead of having a PDF or HTML full text, it says this, full text finder. To get this article, all you have to do is click on that link. So I just did, it's opening a new tab. And if it doesn't open, or even if it doesn't open right away, I like to just click the link at the top. So I'm gonna click that link at the top, which said open in a new page. And it looks like it might take us where we need to be. Awesome, it did. So let me make that a little bigger. You will see right here it says PDF. Click that, it should open it, and then I can save it. We got it. Now if you do this and you're gonna cite it, you need to go back to your search results page, click on number three now, instead of clicking that full text finder link, I'm gonna click on number three here, click on the link, and then I can get my citation from the right hand side. If that doesn't work, clicking the full text finder, sorry I didn't clarify. If I click that link that says full text finder and it doesn't work, or if you happen to be an NBA team that I'm working with for an hour and we search and search and search and find nothing, which true story did happen. We found a report with that NBA group, but it was created by a marketing company and they wanted reimbursement. Of course they did, right? They put a lot of time and money in it. And so we had to buy it. It was a long shot, but I said, hey, let's try this free service that we have. Let me show you what that was. So if I go to the library, uvu.edu slash library, and I look right below the search box, you will see there it says interlibrary loan. This is a quote unquote free service. Um, and I'm using quotes because it's not free. You guys have paid for this already. Your tuition is paid for it. It's a free service though, nonetheless. And you can click on that and you can request books and articles that we don't have here at our library. Now, unfortunately, the books come through the postal service and they don't come to your house. They come to the library. So if you do come on campus, you can get a book this way. It can come from all the way from like New York Public Library. It'll be, it'll come through the mail and you can pick it up here in the building. If you're not able to do that and you don't ever come on campus, most public libraries have this service. So if you find a book that you just can't get your hands on, check with your public library, see if they have an interlibrary loan. Or if you do live in the state of Utah, we have an agreement with all the schools in Utah, not elementary schools, I'm talking about universities and colleges, where we can check out at their libraries and they can check out at ours. So you're always welcome to run down to that local university and check stuff out. Um, <clears throat> so back to the interlibrary loan. To request a book or an article, all you do is click on login. And then once you're logged in, on the left hand side, you'll just click on request book or request article. It takes about 10 days for a book to arrive in the library or uh, articles take about three. And then once you get an email saying you can come pick it up, the article will be inside here. You'll just log in and you'll download it as a PDF. All right, guys, that's, that about covers everything that I had intended to cover. Um, what I'd like to do now is just give you guys a chance to practice. If you don't have anywhere to be for the next five or 10 minutes, give it a try. Try and find something. Um, usually Chris, uh, or sorry, Mr. Bigelow, Dr. Bigelow, has an assignment that you guys are working on. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to just try and you know play with this, maybe find an article or two, something that you can use for the assignment. Uh, and then if you run into an obstacle, I'm here you know, and I can help, help you out. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and finish up and give you guys like five or 10 minutes to do some looking around. Um, and you know, let me do this. You guys are going to get credit for being here, and I am recording this as well. 
so that if you missed anything, uh, you can watch this again later. Um, so I've gone ahead and documented who's here, so you guys get credit for being here. Um, take some time, play with this. Uh, if you feel confident and you're good and you need to go, um, I'm personally okay with that. Um, I guess let your instructor kind of also have a say on that. But go ahead and take some time and uh, try and do a little bit of searching.